What is up YouTube, Jamie the Kid 0 here bringing you guys a little concept that I've been trialing since the release of Toon Chaos and that is Chaos Shadal. Um, keeping with my usual tone, I'm not going to be incorporating Halka Fibrax into this deck, however just to give you guys a little spoiler, this deck does play a Guard Dragon engine and a few combos I don't think that a Shadal deck has ever really played before. This could definitely use some consistency tweaks and I'm going to talk about that throughout the video, so stay tuned, keep watching and hope you all enjoy. So getting into the main deck, um, this deck has a very kind of simple combo that it wants to go for, and we're going to be doing a combo video tomorrow. Let me know you guys want to see that by hitting that like button. I want to see 150 likes before I upload that video tomorrow, but stay tuned for that. Um, so the combo starters that we that we absolutely need to find um, as best we can are one copy of Armageddon Knight, or more optimally, the three copies of Mathematician that we're playing. Now, for those of you guys who saw my previous Shadol combo video, uh, wherein I talked about the Artifact combo, which will be linked in this uh, deck profile that I'm going to put in the card up here, and then the next card that comes up will also be my previous combo video, you need to check those both out because this deck is capable of doing some of those combos. Mathematician was absolutely essential for setting you up a really quite strong board and Artifact Scythe, a card that a lot of people aren't really seeing and don't know to play around. And yes, this deck also has a variant wherein it can produce an Artifact Scythe board and play around Nibiru, which we'll talk about in the next video as well. So you absolutely need your Mathematicians to be able to send most of your Shadol toolbox to the graveyard, as well as sending cards like your Perform Age Damage Juggler that's going to get you uh, through to uh, some of your important light targets. So these are your very important starters. Then for the Shadol content, we are playing the three co three copies of uh, Shadol Squamata. I brought the queue in there a little early. Uh, three Squamata, this is really the Omni Shadol. It's the one you want to open a lot, and if you need to play around Nibiru for the specific Nibiru play that I'm going to talk about, this is the Shadol that you do absolutely need to open. Uh, we've bumped up to two Shadol Dragon, because this being the Scythe variant, um, to pop your Scythe that you're going to set up in your field, you actually need to add a Dragon to your hand. So you don't want to be forced to use a Dragon to make your Shadol Fusion early, say if it's the only Shadol you draw, you need to have a second one to search out of the deck, uh, so that's why the two copies are in there. We're then playing two copies of Shadol Hedgehog to search those dragons, and one copy of Shadol Beast. This is really only in here as an, a Wendy setup and as an additional free send should you require it. There are situations where in this deck plays um, Creeping Darkness, which we'll talk about, which needs to banish two dark monsters from the graveyard. Oftentimes you can just have a situation in which you'll make Construct, send Squamata Beast, and that's your two darks to be able to get you into your further combo pieces. Um, we then play the one uh, Nail Shadol Ariel for the Ariel Advantage combo with the Trap card, and then three copies of Re Shadol Wendy um, to set up that Ariel and set up cards like Beast or whatever we need to uh, uh, add to the board. Uh, honestly, Wendy is just one of the best cards that has ever been released for the Shadol archetype. The amount it sets up off of what is usually a free send off a Squamata or Construct is absolutely bananas, so really big lover of Wendy. Um, so that's all the Shadol component we play. We don't need to play Falco in this version because we're not playing the proxy F Magician combo. Then for the extenders, and we play a fair amount of them because this is playing a little chaos engine, so we are going to need some lights, are as follows. So starting off with technically the one non-light, it is the one Perform Age Hat Tricker, coupled together with the Perform Age Damage Juggler and Trick Clown. Um, I was originally playing multiples of Juggler, in fact I think I have the other one just over here, and you can definitely get away with it, but I wanted to move this deck down to as few cards as possible, and we ended up at 43. Um, this is still really cool to open because you want to be able to discard a chaos, uh, discard a light with a chaos space to be able to search um, the, the chaos creator um, so he's kind of important in, the, in that regard but otherwise I didn't feel that that interaction was so important that I wanted to run multiples of these because it did clog a little bit in hand um, so this is the smallest engine of course you can get it down to and I think it's effective enough it's there for when you need to send it off of a Shadol Fusion going second or most importantly when you're sending it off of your Mathematician play uh, so that's the Perform Age engine um, we then play uh, the two Chaos Dragons in the form of Wither Burster and Collapse Serpent. These two are ridiculously important for our combo. So to let you know, we are going to be making, like I said, the Guard Dragons in this play. In almost all situations, you're going to be adding one of these to your hand with something like Chaos Space or uh, Creeping Darkness. Special summoning one to the board, making the first... Um, 
the first guard dragon, special summoning the second, making another guard dragon in another zone so that they both point to each other, and that's how you're going to do your advantage play. So these two are very, very important for that. An acute interaction they have with chaos space as well is when you use your chaos space, if you summon one, you've searched the other one, you summon this one, once this one is off the board, you put it back into the deck, and then you are uh, using the chaos space, and then you can use this to search it to your hand, and that's a free light, and lights are pretty hard to come by in this deck. Um, then for further extenders, we are playing the two copies of Chaos Valkyria. Um, we do play a very powerful boss monster in this deck that we want to send to the graveyard to resurrect, and we're not too bothered about activating its effect. Um, we'll get to that in a moment, but Chaos Valkyria is very important for setting up that card if we don't do our combo using the Guard Dragons. Um, so two Valkyria, uh, and then the Chaos boss monster, the thumbnail himself, three copies of the Chaos Creator. Chaos Creator gets us so much extension because of the fact that you can bring back cards like El Shadol Construct and Construct's effect is going to trigger, it gets you ridiculous advantage and it also lets you recycle a lot of your important resources by selectively banishing them. So big, big love for the Chaos Creator and everything that's been bringing to the game lately. Um, then finally there are a few kind of odd one-offs that I kind of call these the cards we don't want to draw and that is the one Omni Dragon Brotor, the one Artifact Scythe and the boss monster herself one Arc Lord Christia. Um, so we're playing Christia because we're playing this co the um, artifact combo and you have a cool interaction wherein if you're going into the Guard Dragon play you will be making Artifact Dagda. You can make the Artifact Dagda, uh, put the Guard Dragons either side of it and then put the Brotor underneath and Brotor can copy the Dagda searching a Christia you then make Sayuja and special summon the Christia. It's pretty broken. So that's all of the one ofs that we play in there. And Christia, you can also set up with Valkyria, so you have multiple ways into her. And with the amount of rank 8s we can make, you can imagine that we're going to be able to make a lot of protection for, for Big Chris as well. So for spells, we're playing a large number of 3 ofs just to gain consistency, and I'd play 3 of this one if I could, but it's the only one of in the spell lineup, and that is Foolish Burial. It's any Shadol you want it to be. It's the 5th enabler in the form of like Armageddon Knight or... Um our mathematicians, so it's really, really good. It's actually better than Armageddon Knight, so it's really fourth card. Um, three copies of Chaos Space. So Chaos Space is one of the cruxes of the deck. It gives us the opportunity to search out a huge amount of the deck. It searches out our Chaos Creators, our Valkyrias, and both of these guys, to name but a few. It's absolutely ridiculous, the fact that it can get us to these cards, and the amount of other targets that it can come, that it can come out with. Um, I'm, I'm only really scratching the surface of what the card can do, but its ability to search out power cards is absolutely monumental. Unfortunately, it has to search out the opposite of what you discard with it, so you're mostly going to be discarding darks in this deck, um, and then it will search a light, uh, which is all right. It'll get you to Valkyria, or it'll get you to Wither uh, but I do wish it could just search either or. But, uh, you know, Beggar can't be a chooser at the moment. Uh, we are then playing Shadol, uh, a fair few Shadol Fusion spells. We're playing the three copies of uh, traditional Shadol Fusion, and then the three copies of El Shadol Fusion. Um, the one thing this deck suffers from is because it's not playing the Invoked Engine, it really misses out on a large number of on, on having additional Fusion spells. So some of the things I've been trialing are cards like Instant Fusion and Nef Shadol Fusion. Uh, Nef Shadol Fusion is more just a cute thing because I haven't featured it in a profile in ages and it's more enjoyable to play than polymerization and it gives us access to more lights and an easier way into construct. Um, but you genuinely, if you wanted to play more fusion spells and you wanted to push the content of the deck up, um, I think honestly even just playing traditional polymerization is fine. Super polymerization is a little difficult because you have to have an extender and you usually have a combo if you have an extender anyway. So maybe maybe squeeze in a few polymerizations or uh, other fusion spells that you could get away with. Magicalized fusion couldn't do it. I think traditional poly is probably the way to go ahead. But I'm playing the six fusion spells in this because like I said, I wanted to keep the main deck count down uh, and I I don't miss them too often but it is quite important that you open them um, and then the only other spells I play returning for the first time since the 60 card Thunder Dragon deck I played um, is one of my favorite search spells Creeping Darkness um, so you have to banish two dark monsters from your graveyard and you can add one level four dark monster from your deck to your hand so that gives you a way to search this guy, um, a way to search uh, wherever they are, this guy, and a way to search this guy. All very, very important cards for various stages of combos. So Creeping Darkness, really, really important searcher to get you to one of these three incredibly powerful units. Um, and that's the end of the spell lineup, and we are just playing the one trap card in the form of the Reshadol Fusion for all of the combo plays that it lets us get away with. 
Then for the extra deck, this is one of the tightest squeezes I've ever had to commit to. It's really, really difficult, and there are definitely changes that can be made to this. Um, I'll let you guys kind of explore that in your own time, but I'll try and talk about it as I go through. So we'll open it up with three copies of El Shadol Construct. El Shadol Construct is still kind of the lifeblood of the deck. If you check out the artifact combo that I showed before, you absolutely need to make three of these in the combo. Um, and we're playing so many chaos options in this and you're going to be going through so many light monsters anyway this has never been easier to make than in this deck um, so the fact that she's often going to be made using a skomata and then get you a second send she is instantaneously a combo um, and also if you are able to fusion summon for her if memory serves she is uh, instant access to that Nibiru combo I was talking about before. I think you need this and any one Chaos Monster if I'm rem remembering correctly, but it's uh, if you, to dodge the Nibiru and set up a Sanctum, sorry, to set up a Scythe, uh, we'll go through that in tomorrow's video. Um, we then play the one copy of El Shadol App Cologne and then the one copy of El Shadol Winder. Um, this was as much as I could squeeze in and I really wish I could put in an extra Winder, um, but you need App Cologne as a combo starter when you don't have a light and you need Winder uh, for obvious, obvious lockdown reasons. Then for the two Xyzes we're playing, we're playing one copy of Titanic Galaxy and one copy of Dingirsu. Um, Dingirsu is in here to stop our Christia boards being outed uh, because you can set up a play wherein you go, uh, you've go, you got your Sayuja on the board, you can summon, say, a Dark Creator, or in some cases you have enough recursion to put two um, constructs on the board. You then make this and then use your uh, Sayuja to special summon your Christia, and your Christia has two levels of protection. Or if you're a little bit more spell conscious, we're playing the Titanic Galaxy to prevent that as well. This normally ties in a lot better with Scythe rather than Christia, but we have the two different ways to stop our opponent's special summoning, which is really, really cool. Um, and then for the Link Monsters, we're actually going to go down in Links. We're going to start with the one Unchained Abomination and the one Sayuja Skull Dread. Um, so Sayuja, of course, really, really important for our um, Guard Dragon combo. The whole thing doesn't work without it. The one Unchained Abomination is really, really useful if you end up playing into the traditional um, Scythe combo. So that's pretty important. Then for a couple of Link 2s, play the one Artifact Dagda. That sets up our Scythe, and it's also our Search target for our Christia. And the one Shadol Construct for the Scythe combo traditionally, and it's really, really good to give us additional access to... Uh, kind of its fake fusion spell body that it counts as. Um, we then play one cross sheep and one verte anaconda, and then we're going to finish that off with the two guard dragons, guard dragon LP and guard dragon pisty. So that brings me to about the end of the list that I've been experimenting with. Um, this is a lot of fun, and I think I'm only really scratching the surface of what the chaos engine can bring to Shadows. Um, let me know what you've been tinkering with down in the comment section below, and I will try and get that combo video put out for you guys first thing tomorrow. I hope you have all enjoyed. Leave me your feedback. Leave me a like if you did enjoy this more experimental concept. Um, I know it loses quite hard to hand traps, but if I brought you meta decks, it would just look exactly the same as every other video. So this is something a bit more experimental. Subscribe if you're new here, and share this with your friends if you think they would benefit from it. I hope you've all enjoyed. I have been Jamie the Kid 0 and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.